Next to enter the den are Steve Capon and Mark Sheehan. So, uh, what's my name? Tony. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to show the dragons a gadget that they admit divides the crowd. It's kind of a Marmite product. You either love it or you hate it. Nice to get some DIY going in the den. I mean, to be fair, this place could do with a bit of a makeover, <laughs> couldn't it? Steve invented the product, but Mark's the maths meister. Well, Mark's going to do the numbers, because he's an expert, and Don't I... I think I'd be glad to get <laughs> remember my name, yeah? <laughs> and there's one dragon in particular that the pair are DIYing to have on board. Stephen Bartlett. This is going to sell online so he can bring what we need to the party. I just hope he wants to be in the party with our product. Hi, Dragons. My name is Steve Capon, and I'm the inventor of Matey Measure. I'm also a builder of 30 years, and today I'm pitching for £80,000 for 10% of my company. My name is Mark Sheehan. I'm the chairman of the company. I've been a friend of Steve for 20 years. Now, Dragons, have you ever had a problem measuring with a tape measure and you've got it wrong and you have to go and do it again? So you've wasted all that time. Well, Macy Measure is a solution to this problem. OK, well, this is Macy Measure. It's stainless steel and this goes over the tape measure. And it's to get the measurement on a recess. So where the tape bends up, that's where people guess, and that's where most people get it wrong. So you slide, you glide, you clamp, keeping them on the free lugs. So there's the measurement every time. You can walk over to where you're going to cut, stick it on the end, and mark it. So this is Macy measure. Don't guess it. Macy, measure it. Can we, we invite you up to look at it or, or try it, if you wish? Yeah, have a quick look. A tool to make tape measures accurate around corners is the business on offer from Steve Capon and Mark Sheehan. Do you go that way, do you? You can go e either way. If you're right or left-handed, it's whatever suits you. 10% of the company is what's up for grabs, but for that, the Dragons must cough up £80,000. So, all right, thank you. Uh, there are samples in the boxes, I believe, and uh, we're open for questions. Having tested their product, Peter Jones is first to question the mates behind the measure. OK, so what it seems to me is that you've invented basically a paper clip for a tape measure. It's a measuring aid to get over the bend in a tape measure. It's not a clip, no. So, when did you launch the product? We launched it back in February 2020. So, where did you sell it? Into what stores? Well, when we first launched it, we launched it at the, the uh, NEC, and it was a construction week show. We sold 500 units, and everyone loved it. Then we went to the British Invention Show, uh, where it picked up British Invention Show of the Year. Uh, is, that the is that the trophy that you won? Uh, that's one of the trophies. Uh, we put it into a, a one in Europe and it won gold for the product. And the diamond is British Invention of the Year. So this is really going to be good, isn't it? That people judge a product by how innovative it is and you win lots of awards. But does that translate into making lots of money? I, I believe it does, actually. So, so what's, what's the turnover been then since February 2020? We, we've actually traded only properly for a year because of COVID, because our um, factory closed. But we sold 17,000 in total. OK. Well, how much did you generate? What income? We had uh, 82,000 that was our turnover. And the gross profit? The gross profit was, um, let me wait one second. No, I, it's not in my mind. I'm having a senior moment, I'm afraid. So what's the total loss to date? The, the, the total loss to date is we are uh, around £24,000 because we paid around £22,000. No, I'm not asking you why. OK. Right, so your total sales have been £82,000 mm. and overall you've lost twenty four. Is that fair? Yeah, that's fair, yeah, I guess. Fair. Yeah, fair. OK, thank you. Peter Jones discovers 
the entrepreneurs have yet to make a profit on their award-winning product. Tuka Suleiman now wants to talk about something that he thinks doesn't add up. Stephen Mark, you two look like very astute business people. Oh, well, hopefully, yes. <laughs> what do you take us for? Sorry? You've come in here with a business that's turned over 80 grand. You've added a, a zero on the end, and you're valuing the business 800,000. Yes. Now, either you've got 750,000 cash in the bank, or you've got an oil well that you're going to throw in. So uh, please explain which sure. genius has come up with the valuation. Well, I'm the genius, uh, supposedly, here. Right, OK. Never come on, Mark, explain. show us how you got to 800 grand. Can I explain then, please? Yeah, sure. It's, uh, we, we turned over 80,000 pounds, and that was with, with no marketing at all. We spent 26,000 pounds on patenting right. for the future. We would, we would have been in profit quite well by now, but for that. So that's where we are today. Sure. So, so let me ask you a question. If you had to revalue the business where we are today, what would you value it at? If, if you came to me today, I would probably around the, I suppose, 40,000 perhaps at this stage. 40,000 pounds? Yeah, at this stage. So, you, OK, you've come in here asking for 80,000 for 10%. So all of a sudden, you've got my backup, right? Yes. That is a really unfair comment from Tuka. Why? So, because they have got IP, and when you, you value a want, business, Deborah. you don't. When you value a business, your answer was wrong, by the way. You've got to evaluate how valuable is that IP. What is the potential within that IP? So your answer was actually wrong. So I just can't sit here and listen to that. I think Deborah's quite right. This is patent pending. I'm quite, well, I'm confident, but our patent attorney is confident as well. Guys, you can have all the patent in the world, but as an investment, it's not worth more than 40 grand. So I'm not going to give you 80 grand, am I? So for that reason, I'm out. Tuka Suleiman is seriously vexed about the valuation the pair have placed on their business and abruptly ends his interest. Deborah Meaden is the DIY doyen of the den. So what does she make of the measuring device? So I think, it, I think it's lovely and I think it's helpful and I think it feels really, really nice. But you are going to struggle online. You're going to struggle well, online because of the... What, what did you want to say? Online is where it explodes and I believe if it was advertised right online because it's what... When it's shown, bang, people get it. If it's on a shelf in a store, people will pass it. And that's... So what does explodes mean? Explode means people get excited. No, no, I mean buy buying. It. I'm not saying people get... D the DIY world is full of people looking at videos and going, that is amazing, and then not buying it. But it's how you show the no, video. No, no, let's focus on what I'm saying. So online, your sales, what do you mean by explodes? Well, we've had three influencers. And when we get an influencer, it just, it sells out. If it was online and it was done correctly and we had someone with that experience and clout, so it your could online really sales sell to date, really well. Your online sales to date are? There are a third of the 17,000 units. Yeah, I, so listen, I think you've got a business. That is a very lovely thing and I think you will make some good money out of this. What I don't see is, is a mass market, which is what I was looking for. So I, I genuinely do wish you well, but I won't be investing. I'm out. I wasn't overly excited about the product, but I was waiting to see Deborah's reaction to it because she is firmly in this industry. And the fact for me that Deborah didn't see it as a big enough opportunity that she wanted to invest is what switched me off. So the bottom line was if it wasn't good enough for Deborah, it wasn't good enough for me today. So I'm going to say I'm out, um, but I really hope you manage to make a success of it. Thank you. If I look at your product and what you've created, which is basically a clamp for a measure, tape measure, the, it's, a, it's actually really clever. And you have sold 17,000, so you've demonstrated that people will buy it. But in terms of building a business around this one product, it's not an investment. So for that reason, I'm out. Three more dragons depart, leaving only Stephen Bartlett remaining. He's been quiet up until now, but he was in the pair's sights when they entered the den. 
Will he join their party as they'd hoped? When I first saw this, I... I thought it was... To be honest, I thought it was pretty unnecessary. But um, having seen this product, would I, would I buy it now? The answer's no. And three odd years to do 80K for something that you seriously believe in, is it because these are full-time inventors and part-time entrepreneurs? Probably. I'm 100% behind this product. I personally think that in the last three years, there should have been more traction in this. And because I haven't seen that traction, I'm going to say that I'm out. But I wish you the best. Thanks, guys. Thank you very Thank much. You. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Stephen Bartlett passes on the proposition, and Steve and Mark depart with nothing. That was hard, wasn't it, actually? Yeah, it was. I'm disappointed, of course. Yeah, but I'm still positive about my product. It's not a big enough problem. Yeah, it doesn't solve a big enough issue. I'm sorry, I got the figures a bit wrong, but... Uh, That's OK, you're only human. I understand what they were saying, but you have to take it on board. I think it was... There's a lot of sense spoken in there, but we move on and we, we'll work our own way and make some money.